two. I use this scripture first because all of us want to follow Jesus. He is our standard. He is our Lord. He is our Savior, our Redeemer. He is our teacher. And he is God in the flesh. And Jesus, it says, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I want to comment on something, but I'm afraid to comment on it. I think I'll comment on it. What do you think? Okay, I'll comment on it. Look at that verse carefully. He fasted what? 40 days. And what else? Let me tell you why I want to comment on that. Some people say, we fast until 6 o'clock. And then we eat. And we eat plenty, 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 because we ain't going to eat again until next, 6 o'clock the next day. You know this kind of day, them kind of fast? Read the verse again. He fasted 40 days and a night. <laughs> Ramadan, fasting from 6 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening, and then you eat as much as you can. Jesus was a different level. Fasting is all day and all night. Okay. But this verse is a standard for us. People say today fasting is no longer important. Well, Jesus must have been confused. You are not flesh. You are a spirit. Don't confuse your body with you. This is why fasting is priority to Jesus. You are not a you are not a a, a spirit trying to have a supernatural experience. You are a spirit having a natural experience on earth. You are not from here. This is why you can never get in touch with your real world without the practice of fasting. When you want to experience your real self, you have to deny your flesh. This is why most of us don't want to pay the price for spiritual experience. We want to eat pizza and still feel the anointing. <laughs> this is the problem. We, we, we are so built to respond to the flesh that we, we would minimize relieving ourselves of the pleasure of physical food. But Jesus saw fasting as the priority. It is the first thing he did before he entered ministry. He didn't go for ordination. He didn't go for some group to lay hands on him or no synod or no council. He went by himself and stopped eating. For how long? 40 days and 40 nights. He saw the priority. Look at Matthew 6 verse 16. Then he says these words. When you fast. The first word is very important. He didn't say if you fast. Now who's he talking to? His disciples. He said look uh, by the way guys whenever you fast. In other words you will do this. This is not an option for my disciples. This is expected. When implies you will do this if you claim to be mine. A lot of people think that fasting, that means abstaining from the pleasure 
of consuming material food is an option. It is not an option. It is a requirement to be a disciple of Jesus. What is amazing is even the other religions see it as important. Even more so than those who claim to follow Jesus sometime. Because many religions have their whole religion fast. Like the Muslims. They got a whole period that is set aside for every Muslim to, pa to fast all around the world. Not a complete fast, but at least they claim it as a fast. I don't think we've ever had a national declaration of fasting in the Bahamas for the Christian church I don't know of any where everybody stopped eating <laughs> no when you fast do not look what somber but he says only hypocrites do that that means that if you are on this fast no one's supposed to even know it by your physical appearance You don't fast to be seen of men. And then he says, they disfigure their faces to show men that they are fasting. This, what you really have here is people using a, a spiritual activity for physical brownie points. It's like trying to tell people I'm holy by some action you're doing he says no fasting is not for you to walk around trying to impress people this is between you you're trying to impress God you're trying to tell God I really want you I am so hungering for you in my spirit and my life is so much in need of you I'm putting aside the things I love like food Matthew 6 17 he says Go into your closet so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting. Jesus is speaking. But only to your father who is where? Unseen. He says fasting is really for God to see your love for him. This is a private relationship. This is a, a personal commitment to God. And that's why fasting is we come before God. Not to show people that we are fasting. This also means then that losing weight is supposed to be a byproduct of fasting, not the purpose for it. Don't, don't smile. Keep look, looking serious at me. Because some of you are so glad for fasting. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, you finally get a group to help you lose weight. That's how you feel. <laughs> this is not a weight loss group. This is a seeking the face of God group. Can I hear an amen in the building? We are here to seek God's face. We want more of God. We want to experience more of his spiritual capacity. We need God so badly, we put aside the things we love to seek his face. That's fasting. Not to be seen of men. And God sees in secret, Jesus says, your love and desire for him. And he rewards you how? Openly. It is beautiful. God says, I'm going to show the effects to everyone. Not the practice to everyone. The experience is private. The results are public. So when you see some things happening in February, and people begin to wonder why they're happening in your life, tell them, I paid for this. Yes. Say it, I paid for that. In other words, some things going to happen in February that everyone's going to be confused. How come that happened to you? You're going to say, I paid for that. They can say, how much you paid? I can say, they can say, you can say, you don't want to know the price. <laughs> The price. Look at this one. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 3 says, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. We need a prime minister like Jehoshaphat. He commanded the whole country to fast. Somehow Jehoshaphat knew 
there are some things that even the national conditions of my country needs that require fasting. Having meetings with councils and senates and parliaments and congress don't solve the problem. He knew I needed something else to solve the national problem. Let's all fast, he says. Wouldn't it be great to have a country that stops and say on Monday and Tuesday, we're going to encourage our citizens to stay away from food. We will all seek God for 48 hours. What a prime minister that would be. You know, whether the people do it or not is not important. It's declaring it. Proclaiming it is important. Because you're telling God you want national results. Fasting is not only for individuals, it is for nations as well. What is fasting? Write this down. I'm going to define it for you. Fasting is the willful abstaining from natural pleasures. For a spiritual purpose. Please write that down please. Fasting is not just abstaining from food. It's from any willful pleasure. It includes food. But it can also include things like. Watching television. Going out. To social events. Enjoying the company of people. That's a pleasure. This is why when you study fasting in scripture. The people who fasted always run away from social environments. They hid in the desert. Or in caves. Or they went alone in a mountain. Why? Because when you are fasting. It's not just the pleasure of food. That you abstain from. But the pleasure of distractions. Sex. Is a pleasure. When the Bible talks about in Corinthians chapter 7. Paul says if, if one of you want to fast. He or she must first ask their spouse. For permission. Why? Because fasting includes that pleasure. So I want to warn you now, if you're married, well. Jesus, <laughs> help us, Lord. You got to sit down with your spouse tonight and say, now, honey, you know, we're going to go before the Lord. <laughs> abstain. That's what it means. Fasting means abstain. From any natural pleasure for the sake of what? A spiritual purpose. You are looking for something higher than the, than the natural. You're saying, God, I want you so bad, I'm going to de deny earth to taste heaven. It's fasting. Fasting is also a personal commitment to renounce the natural. To invoke the spiritual. It's very specific. Its motivation is clear and clean. Fasting is, I am going to commit myself personally to renounce the natural pleasures of life for the sake of invoking the spiritual power in my life. Fasting is also the dedication to a period of time to devote oneself to spiritual priority and prayer with out food. Without food. I have read so many types of fasts. I don't know where they got them from. You know, I'm fasting. I'm fasting Coca-Cola, they say. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> so you eating Pepsi, drinking Pepsi or something instead? Because I fast all kinds of things. You know, uh, you know uh, I'm fasting salads. So what are you doing otherwise? In other words, this, this is not a fast. This is a diet. Fasting is not a diet. It's a commitment to abstain. And you dedicate yourself for a period of time in order for you to devote yourself. Devout means I am seeking something. I am seeking someone. I am seeking God. And I want no distraction. 
you will learn during these first four days that eating consumes more time than you can believe. You'll be amazed how much time you, th you, you, you take dealing with food. It's incredible. Based on my research for years, we've discovered that you spend 10 hours a day on food. 10. Yes, 10. <laughs> that includes the hours thinking about it. It's real. They did research. 10 hours a day you spend on food. That means if you stop eating, you actually gain 10 hours to do something else with your mind. Like right now, you're thinking about what's left on the stove. <laughs> and you got 12 midnight to start and you got it all worked. Instead of listening to me, you're thinking about how you're going to hit that macaroni. <laughs> hey, stop it. Come on. I rebuke it. Come on, Freeport. I know you're there thinking of that chicken. Up. You see, the thinking is preoccupation. To plan a meal for your family can take five hours. Just to plan it mentally. Fasting sets you free from all of that. And this is why I get more work done on a fast than any other time in my life. I mean, the ability to get time to work explodes. You're going to become so productive the next three weeks. You're going to be so happy. You're going to be sad to break the fast. So fasting is devotion. You devote yourself. This is why on a fast like this, we meet every night. Because we don't want you hanging around the kitchen. There are demons in your kitchen the next three weeks. <laughs> They're hiding in the refrigerators, in the toaster. <laughs> hey, boys, say devotion. Devotion means you turn your face toward something. Your whole life, your whole focus is on that thing. That's what fasting is. You devote yourself to God. And this is why we meet and we stay together. For the whole fast, we meet all the time, and we call each other during the day, and we, you know, we encourage people to change, exchange phone numbers, so or or text messages, so you can just encourage each other, because you got to stay together, because you are devoted for this period to God. Fasting. What's the principle of fasting? Fasting is not just missing a meal. I'm going to fast lunch because <laughs> I need a blessing. That's not a fast. Fasting is a period of time, not the missing of a meal. Secondly, fasting is not dieting. Say it with me loud. Fasting is not dieting. Say it again. Fasting is not dieting. Say it loud. Fasting is not dieting. Okay? So please get that clear in your mind. We got so many people here who've joined us from other churches. So always, uh, every year we're so glad to have so many churches from our country joining us. And that's wonderful because some churches don't do this. So many people can join us every year because they wanted this experience. And that's wonderful. Fasting is not dieting. Number three. Fasting demands replacing the reading of the word and prayer with meals. This is very important. When you're on a fast, you actually do replacement experience. What you would enjoy doing something else, you replace that with something spiritual activity. For example, instead of watching TV, you would actually maybe listen to a CD that would feed your spirit. You replace it. Instead of eating lunch, you would then go by the beach and read the Bible. In other words, you're still eating, but you eat something different during a fast. So every time you're supposed to be doing something that is natural, you convert it to something spiritual. That's a fast. And this is why most people who fast in Scripture, they hide away. Because they don't want to do things that are natural for that period. During the fast in our home, the television is a rare experience. 
We turn it off. We even fast the newspapers. You don't want to feed your spirit that negative stuff about all that negative stuff. <laughs> we fast relationships that are distracting. Books that you read, you got to be careful. Magazines that you read, you want to fast. If there's devotion, you replace it with spiritual activity. Number four, fasting demands dedicating time for meditation. Uh, fasting is supposed to be a time that you spend time with God. And sometimes it doesn't mean you say anything. The word meditation doesn't mean to talk. There's a difference between meditation and prayer. Meditation is a type of prayer. But it's speech, speechless prayer. And more work is done by meditation than speaking. But we've been conditioned to keep talking. We believe that prayer really means that somebody can be making noise in God's ear. No, some of the greatest miracles of hearing God's voice is when you shut up. And fasting is supposed to be filled with meditation. And God will say to you, just sit and listen to me for the next two hours. Just don't, don't say nothing. I'm going to talk to your mind. I'm going to talk to your conscience. Now that you are spiritually tuned in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk. You don't talk. Since I got you cornered now on a fast, I can finally talk to you, he says. We're too busy for God to talk to us. Look at your to-do list. Ain't no space for God, right? I got to do these things today. And the next day, and God says, am I anywhere in there? I'm talking about time with me. Fasting is that period where you say, God, it's all you. You can talk as long as you want. I give you my time, meditation. And number five, fasting requires spending time in the word. Some of you have not read the Bible for a long time. And by the way, you could tell when you haven't read the Bible. You end up with spiritual dryness. You feel dry, like, like a barren land. There's no way for you to read the Bible every day and not be spiritually active. Fasting drives you back to the word of God. And now that we got these, you know, Bibles you can download or an iPad, an iPod, an iPhone, and there's no excuse for you not to have the Bible with you. Fasting means you read the word. There should be chunks of the word that you read every day on a fast. You read them. That's why the, during the meal time, when you're supposed to be having lunch, you get into the word. The Bible says the word of God is milk to those who are young and it's meat to those who are spiritually old. And then the Bible says it is life to your spirit. The word I speak to you, Jesus said, is life and it gives you life. So when you read the word of God in the fast, you actually are having a good meal in the spirit. Make sure your Bible is close to you. Attitudes in fasting. Matthew 4. I want to repeat some of these scriptures. Jesus said, after 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now, let me just say something about this. Everybody say 40 days. 40 days. Scientists have proven, and I too have proven, that your body can go without physical food for 40 days. Now, I'm going to say this again because it doesn't sink in the first time. Your body is designed by God to go without physical food for 40 days. So up to 40 days on a fast, you are not starving. Starvation only sets in on the 41st day in your body. Starvation is when the body begins to eat itself. We call that malnutrition. Fasting can go up to 40 days with no impact on your health except positive life. Why is that important? Because by Thursday, some of you will think that the devil has entered your body, <laughs> demons have filled your house, and you are going to die, you're going to call the hospital, and you're going to ask them to come put some kind of liquid in your body, you're going to ask for syringes, you're going to pray for God to 
cast out every demon in your life. Because <laughs> you're going to think you're dying. And the answer is no. You don't start dying until 48, 40 days. So anything before 40 days is simply biological habit. Your body is conditioned. The good news is on the seventh and eighth day of a fast, you become free from food. Totally free. So you have to make it to the seventh and eighth day. Eight is always the number of renewal. And every eight day of a fast, some of you have been through it, that's when your body breaks the need for food. Once you pass eight, you can go to 40. So the big fight comes on day five and six. Six is the number of the flesh. Biblically speaking, it is. That's why God made man's body on the sixth day. Six is flesh. That's when you have your biggest fight. That's when the devil personally comes to visit you with boiled crab and, and steamed onions and, and you know, lobster and all this stuff. On the sixth day, all your friends show up with food and won't take you somewhere. Why? The devil is saying, if, if, you, if she ever breaks the sixth day, I'm in trouble. So you got to make it through the sixth. Who's going to make it? Let me see your hand. Let me see, confess, eh? All right, all right, I'll watch you. <laughs> 40 days. Elijah fasted 40 days. Moses fasted 40 days. Jesus fasted 40 days. And I fasted 40 days. 40 days is possible. During the last fast, my wife and I had a fight. We kept looking at each other. Do we have to? We hate it to break it. It was so sweet uh, to wake up in the morning and not have to touch anything. No desire for nothing. It was so free. You know what I'm talking about. It's so wonderful. You can see why it's so easy to go 40. Every time you break a fast, I have to force it. That's how free you are in a fast. 40 days. So don't call me, tell me, I'm dying. You ain't dying. <laughs> my head's spinning. Yeah, I know your head's spinning. Your head will become nausea because the poisons in your body are trying to get out and they're causing all kinds of headaches, driving it out of the kidneys, trying to get it out of, those, uh, out of your liver because you are so poisoned. That's what's making you feel sick. You ain't sick. You're being healed. Amen. I can't take it no more. I'm woozy. And my daughter says I should eat something. <laughs> and she prepared it. <laughs> Whew, can I watch them folks in the house? <laughs> you don't look too well. I've made some boiled fish for you. <laughs> so I bind you in the name of Jesus and your boiled fish. <laughs> now, Matthew 6, 16. When you fast, do not look somber. Don't walk around, please, trying to impress people. Look at Matthew 17 again. It will not appear to people that you are fasting. My head's spinning. What's wrong with you? Be fasting, child. That ain't their business. This is why people who fast go into secret. They don't even want to encounter people. You know, when you fast longer than 21 days, you should actually stop going to work. Because people will begin to wonder about you. And they get in your business. And this is why most people who fast go into quiet solitude. Moses, Moses went to the mountain. Elijah went to the hills. Jesus went to the desert. I went on vacation. You have to get away if you're going to go on a long fast. Very important. What's the importance of fasting? Mark chapter 2 verse 19. But the time will come, Jesus said, when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and on that day they will fast. You remember the people asked Jesus a question. Why doesn't your disciples fast and John disciples fast? It's a very important question they asked him. In other words, Peter, James, and John, Matthew, Bartholomew, all those guys, when Christ was with them, they didn't fast. Why? He fasted for them. And this is important. Uh, you can actually fast on behalf of other people. 
Some of you in this room and those watching us by television and my friends, of course, our folks in Freeport, you actually can actually come in here and say, Lord, uh, certain people are not able to fast. I'm going to bring this fast to you before you on their behalf as well. You can fast for a breakthrough in someone else's life. And Christ did that for the disciples. He fasted for them. That's why he said, as long as the bridegroom is with you, you don't need to fast. Watch him now. He said, but when the bridegroom is taken away, everybody can fast. There comes a time when you're going to fast for yourself. Very important. Acts 13, the importance of fasting. Verse 1 and 2. The church is just beginning. And it says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called them. That word Saul there is the man Paul. What's important, two things in this verse I want you to notice. They were where? In a prayer meeting. What were they doing? Praying and fasting. See, you in good company. You were doing what the apostle Paul did, Peter did, John did. James did. We know different. We just in our generation following the instructions of Jesus. They were in prayer and fasting. And notice where the apostle Paul was called. He wasn't called in a seminary. Also notice that Paul went to church. And Paul went to not just the worship service. He went to prayer meeting. And it was in prayer meeting that Paul was called to change the world. I got a funny feeling something's going to happen to some people in here during this fast where God is going to actually call you into higher ministry during a fast. They heard God in a fast. And the third thing, fourth thing rather, is the church sent Paul out. You know, Paul didn't just say, I ready to go, I go on, the church holding me back. <laughs> He went with the blessing and the covering of the church. You wonder why Paul's ministry was so successful. He had a church to report to. Some folks in ministry and no one to report to. Authority protects you and also it blesses you. It was in the middle of a prayer meeting and fasting that Paul got his release and his name was changed to Paul. What a powerful thing in prayer and fasting. Acts 14, the church again. Paul and Barnabas appointed leaders and elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord. Notice, not just prayer. Fasting. The early church were not just prayer warriors. They were fasting warriors. A lot of folks love to pray. They don't want to fast. Fasting was a normal part of the church's life. And it says, Paul was able to lay hands on people after prayer and fasting. And I am sure those people fasted as long with Paul. In other words, people need to pay a price for spiritual leadership. Not your talent, not your anointing, it's your fasting and prayer. Your attitude to seek God, wanting God. This is why fasting is so important in my life. I, I cannot carry the weight of all the millions of people who are watching me and looking for help and wanting my advice through my intellect. I'm not smart enough to help the people who depend on me. So I got to stay in fasting and prayer all the time. I got to make sure I am constantly open to the channel of God. And that comes through prayer and fasting. I'm excited about the next two weeks. And three weeks for those who are going all the way. Because you are going to actually experience a part of God you never felt before. God's going to have access to your life in places he never had before. This is why fasting is so important. What are the benefits of fasting? First, spiritual discipline. Secondly, increased spiritual capacity. We'll explain that later on in the week. Thirdly, a clear sober mind. Fasting gives you clear thinking. Number four. Fasting gives you pure heart and mind. It keeps your thoughts pure. Number five, fasting gives you a hunger for God. And it makes you want his word. Because the spirit is now taking over and the spirit eats the word of God. That's why you want to see the word more. You want to read the word more. You want to hear the word more. Because the spirit is finally becoming the one in charge during a fast. 
Number six, physical health, results of fasting. There have been many, many reports in this church over the years of people getting healed on a fast. I was healed on a fast, actually, from hay fever. And I was healed so well, I don't even get the flu no more. I haven't had the flu or hay fever or, or colds for like 30 years. I was born with asthma, and I was plagued with, with, uh, with, with, with what do you call that cold that always comes? Sinus. Sinus. Oh, it was bad. My mother used to tell me, winter is coming. I said, how oh, you know? She said, I hear you sniffling already. They could tell the time. I mean, it was so bad. I couldn't sleep. I, I, I had all kinds of medication. And I went on a fast. My 28-day fast, I was 18 years old. I never had cold again. Asthma gone forever. You're going to get healed on this fast. Whatever you don't even know about, this healing is going to come in this fast. You know, in the book of Isaiah, what does it say? It says that when you go on a fast, healing will come speedily. That means you can go the long way and take your time and get healed, or you go on a fast and it speeds up the process. Because your body begins to fall under the spiritual anointing of God's capacity. Some of you came in here with diabetic issues. Maybe you got some blood problems or kidney issues. Or maybe you got some problems with, with blood flow. Maybe you got issues with nerves. Maybe even emotional oppression. God's going to heal you in this fast. In the name of Jesus. I say amen. amen. Healing comes. Loss of excess weight. Praise God. It's the benefit of fast. You get your old clothing back. You ain't going to buy no more you know, new clothing for a while. Praise the Lord. Fasting gives you back your whole wardrobe. That saves you money. So don't throw away your wardrobe, okay? Stay with it a little while. Praise God. You can buckle that buckle again. Fasting gives you beautiful weight loss of excess weight. But number eight, it purifies the body. Number nine, it gives you spiritual freedom. You feel so spiritually light. You feel like flying on a fast. Number ten, physical freedom. Physical freedom is important. Some of you know this on the fast with me over the years. That when you're on a fast, your energy level increases like 200%. Food is what's making you tired right now. I want you to know that. Food is making you tired right now. Some of you are dozing right now because of food. On a fast, you hardly ever sleep. Am I talking right? On a, wait, on a like 15, 17 day, oh my God. You feel like leaping over a fence. I remember when I was 28 day on a fast, I went jogging. And I jogged around Highbury Park. You know, they had a track over there years ago. I jogged. 21 day fast. Man, I felt like I was a, an athlete. 21 days without food. 28 days done to eat. I was running. Fasting gives you physical freedom. You ready for some five hour energy? Fast. The spirit of giving shows up in a fast. You become very liberal because... When your spiritual capacity increases, you become more like God. So you find yourself giving to people, giving things away. It's free to give. It's a spiritual experience. And of course, number 12, your light shines. That means people actually see the anointing out of your life on a fast. You can walk into a room and affect the room on a fast. Your light shines, the Bible says. Your righteousness shines like the noonday sun. On a fast, you even look different. You're bright. Your, your skin is clean. Your, your eyes turn white again because you're clean. And people can feel the presence of the anointing when you walk into God's presence on a fast. Fasting is powerful. On a fast, God protects you. Because you run to him, he takes up even more positions of protection in your life. Don't ever touch a person on a fast. That means don't attack them. You are in trouble if you, if you fool with them. Because now you see, they, they seek in God, so you're looking out for them. <laughs> so I want you to go home and tell everybody in the family, now for the next 21 days, be very nice to me. You know, I don't want to cause anybody's death. Okay? <laughs> be nice to me. Number 14, 
Fasting guarantees answered prayer. Number 15, intimacy with God. Very important one. And we'll hear about this, I'm sure, during this next couple of weeks. Intimacy with God. You would experience it, actually, on a fast. Fasting is so powerful. And number 16, fasting increases retention of what you hear and read. I have written so many of my books on fast. Because on a fast, your brain is so clear that your capacity to intellectually deal with complicated ideas multiplies by a thousand. And you, your memory shoots up. You'll be able to remember things better than any other time in your life on a fast. You read a book and you see things you never saw before on a fast. Everything changes spiritually, mentally, psychologically. A fast cleans you completely out. On a fast is a good time to take an exam. In college, in, in All Roberts University, during an during a exam time, I, I just fast. That's why I'm so smart. And I walk into a classroom with nothing distracting me. Remember now, eating is a distraction. Your body got to focus on digestion. So your mentality is focused on breaking down the food, not dealing with the exam. Let me ask you a question. When was Jesus tested in the wilderness? On the, yeah, on the fast. His mind was so clear he could handle the test. And he won. Yeah, so now you know why you got a D. You ate that chicken first. <laughs> Number 17, fasting gives you spiritual sensitivity. Spiritual sensitivity is very important. The, the more you fast, the longer you fast, the more you pick up the spirit world. It's like a, it's like a radar. Uh, the less you are in the spirit, the less spirit you pick up. The more you are in the spirit, the more spiritual world you pick up. So you will walk into a place and you will sense demonic powers that you never knew was there before. On a fast, you become very sensitive. You will walk into a place and you will know exactly when something is not right. The, the, the power of discernment multiplies by a thousand times on a fast. You become the discerning spirit. You can actually discern things before they happen. Because your spirit is sensitive. It picks up everything. This is why when you're on a fast many times, you actually cause demons to manifest. Not in your life. In things around you. And this is why a lot of times, you know, like those guys, like, you know, A. Allen, those guys, this guy's fast, 40 days, like five times a year. <laughs> R.W. Shambach, I got to meet him. We became friends before he died, you know. And one time we was having lunch together, and R.W. Shambach told me, he says, you know, Miles, he's very, you know, he's a jolly fella. He said, Miles, you know, man, you know, man, I, eating, is a, eating is a distraction. Man shouldn't have to eat so much. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, during the 10 days, I would eat. Four days a month, just four days a month. The rest of the time, I'm fasting. He said, because I have to deal with demons every night. And he said, people be worshiping. And when I walk out of the coach into the tent meeting, as I walk, they just begin to manifest. They knew I was there, the demons. And he said, they began to scream and curse. Because my spirit was so in tune, sensitively, they knew that I was in touch with them. And he said, I cast them all out in Jesus' name. Sensitivity. When I was with the singing group, the Visionaires, people wonder why the Visionaires was so successful. We fasted every month. And a few times as a group, we'd fast 10 days before a concert. You know a concert? No food for 10 days. You asked Mark, I mean, Alan, Alan was here the other day. Fasting was a part of our routine. People say, how come these four guys are so famous? It wasn't our singing. It was fasting and prayer. One day we went to sing to a little church in a little town called Bain Town, here where I was born. This is the Pentecostal Church of Hospital Lane. And we went there, and we had just, you know, beginning to end the fast. We didn't end it. We said, we're going to sing first, and then we end the fast. We were on a seven-day fast. Walked in there, and demons started manifesting. People ran 
away from the demonic manifestation. I ran toward it. We were just young guys, but we knew the power of fasting. And I'll never forget, the demon picked that boy up. The boy. And he, he levitated. And he screamed all kind of stuff. And then he banged him on the ground. And I mean, even the pastor ran away. I was like, no one wants to help this kid. And we were singing, you know, at our guitar and piano. And, and we, we ran over to the guy, and I grabbed him. And I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. The demon says, I know who you are. I said, I know who you are too. Amen. And he said, if I come out, I'm coming in you. I said, I dare you. And I said, did I say that? <laughs> when you are on a fast, the authority of God takes over your life. You're going to be powerful this week. You're going to be powerful next week. You're going to have authority to command demonic powers to leave your neighborhood. But only on a fast. Prayer is not enough. You need to fast. All right. Just guidelines. First, commit yourself to God. We're going to do that in a few minutes. We're going to commit you to God. And the Bible always talks about consecrate a fast. That's a term in the Bible. Consecrate a fast. Consecrate is almost like concentrate. You're going to concentrate on this particular activity. Consecrate means you're set apart for something. You are not allowed to do just anything. You are set apart. We're going to consecrate you. So you've got to commit yourself to that. Number two, drink plenty of water on the fast. Your body is 87% water. So you actually are water physically. This is why when you dehydrate, you can die. Most of what you call a migraine headache is simply dehydration. If you get a headache, drink water. And I'm talking about these migraines that you consider to be, you know, persistent. Many times as you're suffering from dehydration. Now, especially on a fast, you're not getting liquid from anywhere else. So you double upon your drinking of water. And that's why it's important for you to drink a lot of water. And I want you to remember that. We'll, we'll remind you of that every day of this fast. we we'll remind you every day. Because if you don't drink water, you put your own self in danger. Because on a fast, we will learn tomorrow, your fasting dumps garbage into your blood all the poisons and it dumps it into the kidney into the liver and they got to flush it out and water will flush it out if you don't drink water you can actually poison yourself with the poisons that are already in your body is that clear yeah so you want to drink a lot of water Who's what kind of water you know <laughs> all kind of um, you know suggestions for that uh, mineral water some people can't afford that so you want to you know get the best water you can Best water sometimes is from Andres Porn. <laughs> coconut water is excellent. Best water in the world is coconut water. So if you got access to coconut water, praise the Lord. Bring me some. <laughs> All right? That's, that's God's water right there. Natural. Coconut water is God's water. Natural. Yeah, it's natural water. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? No, 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 no. Not coconut in the can. I'm talking about coconut, man. Oh, you thought I meant coconut in the can? No, 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 no. I thought my take machete coconut. You cut the top off. <laughs> put the straw in. Bring it to me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> By the way, that's a good time for someone to start a business. Right on Friday. <laughs> bring your coconut and cut them off and everybody's line up. Three dollars a coconut. Praise the Lord. I want 10%. Uh, we recommend no less than eight, eight glasses of water a day. You can even do more than that, but no less than eight. And then thirdly, also drink, and these are important for cleansing. Hot herbal teas, please. No black tea. Because black tea got terphene, which is almost like caffeine. And your system will be so pure by the you know, eight or ninth day that that can mess your system up. So you want to drink herbal teas, which is on your natural teas from bushes. And of course, we recommend cranberry juice. No juice with, with more than 2% acid. Because in your system, acid will be minimized. Matter of fact, the first five days is going to be your greatest acidic production. 
Your body will be full of acids. You want to get rid of acid. Acid is just like burning fire. You got to dilute it with water. That's why you drink water on a fast a lot. But you don't want to add any acid to your system because your system will be so pure it can burn it. Acid, for example, like in orange juice, too much acid. Pineapple juice, too much acid. The best juice to drink we allow on our fast is cranberry juice. Cranberry juice is a cleansing agent. We also recommend apple juice. Apple juice is very low in acid. It's also a cleanser. So we recommend those in order to, to make sure that you're cleansing yourself. And of course, uh, when you're on a fast, this number four is important, you're, you, you produce a lot of gastric juices. These are acids. Acids are used by your body to break down food. So when your body begins to, to to come to the time when it's used to receiving food, the brain tells the stomach lining to produce gastric juices. Gastric juices is exactly the way it sounds, gas. These are acids. And their job is to attack the food in your stomach and the acid breaks them down and then digests them and they go into the bloodstream. This is where you begin to feel like you are dying on a fast. You, your, most of it is just habit. Your, your body has been conditioned to eat at certain times. And so if you've been eating breakfast every morning at 8 o'clock, lunch every afternoon at 1 o'clock, dinner every evening at 6 o'clock, if you've been doing that you know, for a period of time, then your body automatically produces and it comes off in gases. And you feel the burning that is being burned by, from acids. And that's why every time you're hungry, your ulcers act up because the acids are attacking it again. Drink water, herbal teas. Is that clear? My job and Pastor Richard's job is to take you on this journey safely. We've been doing this for a long time. So we want you to be safe, we want you to have fun, we want you to have a good time, we want you to enjoy it in Freeport, enjoy it in Canada, we want you to have a good time in Florida. This is going to be a great ride, and at the end of it, God's going to be pleased, and the devil's going to be depressed. The effects of fasting, real quick. Fasting changes us. It doesn't change God. You don't fast to change God. Fasting changes the one who's fasting. Number two, fasting does not move God. Fasting moves you into better positioning. Number three, fasting increases your spiritual capacity. Very important to understand this. Uh, when I began to study fasting and began to fast, as a lifestyle, uh, I was incredibly shocked at what I discovered in fasting. Not just from what I read and researched, but in my own experience with it. Fasting is like having a pipe in your house hooked up to a big tank of water. And uh, this pipe has not been cleaned for a long time. So it has built up grit on the inside and it keeps getting smaller and smaller to the point where there's just a little hole. Everything else is clogged up with rust and dirt and muck. The, the pipe is big, but the hole is small because it's all messed up with gunk. So the question is, if you were to hook that pipe up to the water container up on Blue Hill Road, uh, how much water would come through that pipe? How much? Through the pipe. <laughs> Hook it up to that big water tank on the hill. What the hole allows. Am I right? In other words, the amount of water in the tank is still the amount. But what you receive through your pipe is regulated by the size of your clogged up pipe. And if you're not careful, you can actually close that hole up completely. 
That's when a stroke takes place. Blood backs up. We all know about that. Uh, I wonder if there are people in here who are suffering from spiritual clogs. God says, look, I want to use you to reach the world through you. I want to solve that problem in your house through you. I want to solve that problem in your family through you. I want to solve that problem in your community through you. I want to solve that problem in your country through you. But I can't get through you. You're clogged up. Fasting is like Drano. <laughs> Fasting is where you stop clogging and begin to allow purity to eat away the gunk so that your capacity comes back to its fullness so that the force of God's power becomes so strong that anything you turn your pipe on is changed. That's what fasting does. It doesn't increase God. It increases you. Is that clear? So, the devil is so glad you are full of food. <laughs> Could you imagine you walk up to a guy filled with demons and you clogged up. And you start praying in the name of Jesus. Uh, come out. <laughs> oh Lord. The demon says. <laughs> Little, plum, plum, plum. Little drops coming through you. That's what happened to the disciples. When they prayed for that demon possessed boy. They were saved. They loved Jesus. They were with him. His disciples. But the demon says we ain't coming out. Because the force it takes to get us out ain't coming through you. You eat too much. You watch TV too much. You on the internet too long. How can you cast us out? You on Facebook every single minute. You ain't got no power. And Jesus walked down the mountain and says, what's going on here? And the people were all in the village upset. And Christ says, what happened? And a man came and said, Lord, I brought my little boy to your disciples. And he's filled with a demon. And they could not cast him out, he said. Jesus Christ did not speak to the man or the boy first. He turned to his disciples first. And he asked them a question. How long must I be with you? In other words, I've been showing you what you should be doing. You're trying to do what I do without doing what I do. You think praying for the sick is because I can pray for the sick. He says, I dealt with that when I was fasting last week. My capacity is wider than yours. And then he said, bring the boy to me. And he just spoke. Out. <laughs> Blown out. We know the story. At lunch that day, everybody was quiet eating their nuts and dates. And then someone put up the courage and said to Jesus, uh, Master, uh, you know that incident this morning? Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> you embarrassed us, you know. <laughs> what do you mean I embarrass you? Yeah, you know, we, uh, anyhow, uh, why couldn't we cast the demon out, they said. We prayed. And you prayed. He says, this guy doesn't come up by prayer. Your capacity was too small. Demons love saints who like to eat. I mean, it seems as if the church has an eating ministry. On Sunday, you go to any restaurant, full of the saints. <laughs> Not you, I'm talking about you now, you don't know. It's the one right behind you. These people are amazing. I know you, this ain't, this ain't you, but you know, we go straight to food. It's like, yippee, we're free to eat now. It's a, and every buffet is filled with anointed people. <laughs> we just love, you know, and the devil says, take more, take more. 
And the devil knows you come to prayer meeting, you know, go to eat first. He said, eat first. You need to eat first before you go to prayer meeting. Eat. Eat dinner before you come. Eat. Eat, boy. Eat, girl. And he wants to come here with your belly full of food. You know, this prayer ain't going to work. You climbed up. He said, this kind doesn't come out except by prayer. And fasting. The good news is, in the next few days, you will become a threat to the devil. You are going to become powerful. And the power is going to be because of your obedience to God in this consecration. This is why I get so excited about a fast. Because I know that I become more dangerous. Your capacity will increase. Number four. Fasting breaks habits. Spiritual bondage. Some of you don't know how powerful habits are. All I know is you suffer from them. It can be any kind of habit. Drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, sex, pornography, lust, all the stuff that you're fighting with. Even some of the barbiturates and some of the, the, the pills they're making you take for uppers and downers and all this stuff. You know, on a fast, fasting cleans you out so much. It breaks habits. I've met so many people who came to me with problems, with habits. That's, you know, from alcohol and drugs to pornography and sex. And I'd say, look, you're going to fast. And I want you to fast for 10 days. 10 days. In other words, you got to break the eight day. No food, no company. It's you and the word. And they come back to me, totally healed. No desire for anything except God. You go to psychologists, pay some money, go to psychiatrists and lay on the bed and talk about how much they deal, you know, and just go on a fast. Break it. It's a habit. Your healing shall rise like the sun. Number five, fasting quiets the heart. That's one of the benefits. So you can hear God better. Get ready to hear God like you never heard him before. But by the time you reach the 14th day, you're going to be a walking grenade. If someone pull your clip, you explode on earth. Because on the 14th day is the second day of freedom. The first day of freedom is when you hit the seventh day, and they hit the eighth day for new beginnings. The 14th day is the day that you become renewed completely. No hindrance. That's when your heart becomes totally pure before God. Most of the revelation I receive that I 